Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. <clears throat> and God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter to the church at Corinth. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live 
in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Take our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Please be seated. Some of you may know that before I was a priest, I was a teacher, and I've taught all ages, and for a little while, I was a high school religion teacher. And as part of that job, I taught seniors a class on the world religions. And I love studying world religions because for me, it turns out that what happens is when I learn about other faiths and how they see things, it causes me to see our faith and my own beliefs in a new and helpful way. And that happened when I was teaching, and, and as you know, when you're a teacher, you learn things yourself very well. So as I was teaching and also in a way studying Hinduism, and learning about how in Hinduism um, there is a belief that there is, there is this one God called Brahman. And Brahman is this divine part that's part of everything. So really there is, in a way, one God, which is Brahman. And all of the different gods that you probably know in Hinduism um, that have, some have an elephant head and um, some is Shiva with the, uh, you know, there's lots of different gods, but they're all avatars. They're all a manifestation of that one god, Brahman. But what's cool about Hinduism and where I got what Barbara Brown Taylor calls holy envy, sometimes you can think, oh man, that's such a cool belief. I was thinking, wow, how cool is that? They have all these, they have hundreds of different gods so that whatever your 
passion or concern is, or whatever attracts you, you can choose that God. And that, like, whatever your personality type is, whatever your concern is for the moment, you can choose that God. And it can match you just right. And I thought, that is so cool. And then I thought, hey, we have that too in Christianity with the Trinity. Because we also have um, a manifestation of our God in a way, right? It's all one God, but in three. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for us too, depending on what you need in a given moment, uh, or where you're at on your spiritual journey, you may have in your mind more often the image of Father, Son, or Holy Spirit. And so uh, today I just would like to spend some time exploring this, this big God that we have, the Trinity, and different images of God, um, so that wherever we are today on our journey, perhaps it might spark something, uh, to open up our minds into the God, the image of God that perhaps we need right now at this moment, and perhaps reflecting on different aspects of the image of the divine that have been helpful to us over the years. Um, there is a, a quote that I'd like to share from um, maybe some of the teenagers in the room will know Florence and the Machine. Anybody a Florence fan? <laughs> But she has a song that's called Big God, and she says, you need a big God so you, it can hold all of your love um, and fill you up. And I do believe that is what we have, a big God. And so today is Trinity Sunday, and that is why our scripture passages are mentioning the Trinity. So in the gospel reading today, you hear Jesus ask the disciples to go out and to baptize people in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Corinthians, in the first Corinthians reading, um, we also hear the, the entire Trinity named. In the creation story, it definitely is a focus on um, God the Creator, and the, that is the main aspect of the Trinity that we hear there, God the Creator. Although we do hear that God shows up in wind, so that echoes the Holy Spirit. And we know from 1 John, where um, the Gospel of John, it starts off talking about how Jesus was there, Christ was there at the start of creation. But I would just like to go through and just, just speak briefly about each image. Um, so God the Father could also be God the Mother, or God the Loving Parent, God the Creator. And this is a God that we can think of when, in times when we need to be held, when we need to trust, um, when, when we need perhaps to trust that God has a plan, God has our back, and that all of creation, God has that plan and is holding us. The image of God the Son, Christ, Jesus. There is a historical Jesus. We have documents to know that there really Jesus was a person, and perhaps that image is helpful to you. Um, there's also this idea of Jesus as Christ, and the Christ light, which is in all of us as well. Jesus as redeemer and forgiver and lover, and Jesus as friend. In the, in the Book of Common Prayer, in the catechism in the back, um, there are these question and answers that are really cool in my opinion, but I'm kind of geeky when it comes to these kind of things. And it says, who is Jesus? Um, what is the nature of Jesus? And the answer to that is three words. God is love. That in answering what is Jesus in our catechism, it just says God is love. And in, in, the, in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, it does say that um, Jesus is logos. Logos is the Greek word for word. That Jesus is word, capital W, as in the teaching of love. Jesus teaches us and embodies love. And then third, of course, is the Holy Spirit also just called spirit. Maybe you, I like to say spirit of the universe. In the Old Testament, uh, the spirit is also called wisdom, and there's a whole book about the spirit of wisdom. Um, and there's beautiful symbolism for Holy Spirit. Last week we heard uh, the story of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit shows up as wind and fire. Um, there are other stories where the Holy Spirit shows up as a dove, um, in our sacraments, the Holy Spirit is symbolized in water and in oil. And it is a strengthening, and it is ever-present within us and all around us. So these are different images of God. 
And I, I wonder when you think of God and when you pray, which one is probably the most common one that you maybe bring to mind? In artwork and in movies, I, I just want to bring up, I think that oftentimes we get, we get images in movies of the Father God, the Creator God. And it has um, sh shown up, perhaps some people know the late 70s movie when George Burns plays God. I don't know if anybody <laughs> saw that one. <laughs> Um, uh, in, in the 90s, um, Alanis Morissette played do God in uh, Dogma. And um, let's see, Whoopi Goldberg has played God. Um, oh, uh, Morgan Freeman has played God in Bruce Almighty. So these images of God come up. An ancient Im image of God from the 15th century um, is the icon of the Trinity from a Russian artist. Uh, who, um, when, when this artist was praying the story of when Abraham and Sarah are visited by three people, uh, when Sarah finds out that she's going to have a baby in her old age, um, and she laughs, you know that story? We're actually going to hear it in two weeks, so I'll try not to give that too many spoilers away. Um, but <laughs> the, um, so uh, he saw that those three visitors that came to visit Abraham and Sarah, maybe they were the Trinity. And so he created this icon, which is a famous icon, which actually the, the picture on your bulletin today is based off of that icon. A modern day iconographer um, made that based on the Trinity uh, icon. And um, so there's three images. There's actually in the original three angels. I think even in the one on your bulletin today, there's three angels. And the main characteristic is that they're gazing at each other in love. I think in, in, in the modern day one, there's one angel that's gazing out towards us. And that there's a, they're sitting at a table with four sides. And that one side is open to us to sit at the table with the Trinity. Um, but really, they're all on equal ground, and they're looking at each other with gazes of love and respect. And um, I want to just share how one person used that Trinity image to help them through a hard time. And that is the theologian and author, um, uh, Henry Nouwen, which is a more modern day um, author and, and theologian that you may know of. Um, and he was going through a time of depression. and he went to this particular icon and prayed this icon. There's a way of praying an icon like you can pray with scripture. And in, um, in praying that icon, what came to him is that the Trinity is like a house of love. And that in this house of love, there is no judgment. There is no pain or shame. And there's not even a, a need for, for words that it's just a feeling of unconditional love that is unending and always there. And that any time that we want, that Henry wanted, right, that he can dwell in the house of the Trinity, that house of love. So whatever you are, wherever you're at on your spiritual journey today, I hope that um, you are, uh, you're finding what you need in the Trinity whether it is trust and inspiration from the Creator, whether it is companionship, love, and forgiveness from Christ, or whether it is strength and guidance from the Holy Spirit. May we all have what we need in this big God that is our Trinity. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty,
come before the presence of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to ask for mercy and grace. Father of heaven, whose love found a ransom for our lives, we pray for the world created by your love for its nations and governments. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Almighty Son, Incarnate Word, our Prophet, Priest, Redeemer, and Lord, we pray for the Church created for your glory to bear witness to your work. Grant us unity, growth, mercy, and grace. Eternal Spirit, by whom we are raised from sin and death, we pray for all of humankind created in your image for the children in our Link Parish in Madagascar, whose education we support, including Luar Tarni, Markella, Marina, Mondesir, Rodriani, for those in our own parish who have asked to be named. Deborah, Barbara, Bill, Chip, Ann, Bill and Jane, Diane and Jim, Henry and Mary, Barbara and Sam, for those we commemorate today and for those we now name aloud or in silence. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them your mercy and grace. Thrice Holy, Father, Spirit, Son, tri Triune Godhead, three in one. We pray for ourselves, for your church, and for all whom we remember before you. Bring us all to bow before you in heaven to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity as we worship you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please offer each other a sign of peace. Keep sharing the peace. We kind of have a lot of announcements, so we're going to get started. But you can still keep saying peace. Um, the first big one. Well, um, I'm going to make the, our main feature is recognizing the volunteers, but just two announcements before that about what's going on. So uh, next week is our parish picnic and also our first Sunday moving out into the uh, Krogman Courtyard. 
I said it right, right? Yes. <laughs> you learning all these locations. So we're, we'll be worshiping outside um, through Labor Day is the plan, of course, as long as weather permits. Um, and afterwards, we'll be having a parish picnic. Thank you to everyone who already signed up right away uh, to bring a dessert or, or a side. Thank you, thank you. Um, if you still would like to sign up, we'd love you to, to do that. And also, you're welcome to just come and bring something uh, the day of, of course. So. And then after worship today, we are going to go spend some time in the garden, um, if you would like to. Uh, we would love to have you come on out, even if you just want to come and watch other people uh, plant things and spread wood chips. That's totally okay. There's going to be cookies, thank you, to, the, to Colleen cupcakes. and Corey, and cupcakes, and, um, and also bagels and fruit and things like that. So um, there'll be plenty to eat. If you just want to uh, share a meal and look at the garden, you can do that. And if you are ready to work in the garden, we are happy to use your help. <laughs> so uh, we're excited for that. And now, really what is special today is recognizing our volunteers, and um, Chip and Colleen, our wardens, who have done so much this year, um, are going to give a little uh, introduction. Megan asked me to talk about why I became a junior warden and now senior warden, and I just want to share with you, I have a desk with a wall behind my desk, and I put up um, spiritual quotes or Bible verses that just move me. And one of them was, Mary's willingness to say yes came from a place of sincere trust in God. And when Mary said yes, she welcomed God into her already spiritual life. So when I was asked by Hope if I would be the junior warden, I referred back to this a lot. It, uh, Mary had comforted me for many times in the past and helped me with decision making, so I prayed on it, I thought about it, and I finally said yes to her. And I um, have been praying about St. James the Less ever since and hoping in, uh, in God that we're making the right decisions here, all of us together. Um, and I know that there's going to, Me Mother Megan has so many ideas coming for going forward that if you get a call in the future to um, ask for your help, you might want to consider, think about it, pray about it, and think about what Mary might do, and I hope you would say yes as well. Um, during this time of recognition, um, we have had a ton of volunteers, and particularly after Lisa leaving, and um, you know, people in the parish stepping up and helping us and keeping the church running. Um, so, in the interest of time and keeping things moving along. What I would like to do, and we're going to call volunteers by group rather than by name, otherwise we'll be here all morning. So um, being the chair, um, which I'll be stepping down relatively soon, of building and grounds, I would like everybody who's been involved in buildings and grounds and particularly in the rectory renovation to please stand. And we would like all volunteers to stand and stay standing as we call off the different categories. Uh, Glenn, you need to stand. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go by category and, we'll, and um, actually if you could just you could just stay standing, and maybe we'll do a round of applause at the end, because there, there's so many types of volunteers that are at St. James Less. And if you want to see them listed, they're all on page 21. So we're going to start, uh, we'll start with administration and governance, since we already have our um, buildings and grounds standing. So if you're a member of the vestry, would you please stand? If you're a member of the finance committee, would you please stand? If you're a member of the stewardship committee, would you please stand? If you are on an endowment committee or on the churchyard trustees committee, if you could stand. Um, if you were part of the rector search committee, could you please stand? Um, and if you're part of the rector welcome committee, would you please stand? Um, so you, it's, these are all the folks who have been part of administration and governance. A big thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go to outreach now. If you're part of the community garden coordinators, um, if you could stand, if you, or if you ha hold a plot over at the garden or help in any way at the garden. 
If you um, help with uh, the Northfield Food Pantry, I know somebody is making those deliveries uh, every week. If you help coordinate Just Harvest, or the Christmas Baskets, or the Beatles Mass, or if you organize our uh, Madagascar Parish, Link Parish, uh, and have participated in that ministry. If you have done the coat drive, please stand. Wow, look at all these outreach people, thank you. Um, and if you are part of worship, if you've been an acolyte, a crucifer, a worship coordinator, greeter, usher, reader, lectors and intercessors, altar guild, flower guild, chalice bearers, choir, oh, the choir, oh yes, choir, please. <laughs> um, if you are authors, if you are an author of the prayer of the people, if you have helped make palms for Holy Week, palm crosses, if you have helped distribute ashes on Ash Wednesday, please stand. All these people who help make worship possible. All the people who do hospitality, if you have ever been a coffee hour host, would you please stand? Um, if you helped coordinate the Beatles Mash brunch, um, been a part of the kitchen team that gets all those supplies, um, if you're helping at all with the parish summer picnic next week, thank you, please stand. Contributed to potlucks or helped with the Maundy Thursday dinner, please stand. If you are a good Samaritan that writes cards to people, or if you are a good Samaritan that gives people rides, um, and uh, please stand if you are a good Samaritan um, in our community. If you've helped with welcoming newcomers, please stand. And then, if you have ever helped with Sunday school, I know a lot of people were assigned to helping with Sunday school. If you have done that, would you please stand? Um, if you are a confirmation mentor, please stand. And um, if you uh, have helped lead the sermon story time, or if you're helped lead an adult education, please stand. Wow, all these volunteers, a round of applause! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank you for saying yes and for all that you gave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please sit. And I want to say that um, our volunteers make things, make things possible. And thank you so much, especially to Colleen and Chip, who were leaders during this parish, even when you didn't have a rector, which is amazing. And I do want to say that everyone, everyone is being of service just by showing up. So when you show up to worship, um, and you are here, or if you show up to an event, your presence is also of service because it's only fun when we're all together. <laughs> so, so everybody really contributed, so thank you so much. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the blessed St. James and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.